card. So yesterday we learned about a bank account that had an initial balance of $1,000 and earned a 1% monthly interest rate. Each month the interest was added to the account. No other deposits or withdrawals were made. To calculate the account balance in dollars after three years, Elena wrote 1,000 times 1.01 for the 36 dollars. Tyler wrote 1,000 times 1.01 to the 12th power, and then raised to the third power. Did it get a time to look at it? Just look at it now. We have the two different expressions. First thing that I'm going to ask you that you're going to vote on is do they both represent the account balance correctly? So raise your hand if you think that Elena represented the account balance correctly. So we all think she's wrong. Okay. Um, raise your hand if you think Tyler wrote it correctly. Raise your hand if you think that they both wrote it correctly. Okay. So I don't know if it's that you all think that they're wrong or that you all just don't want to answer or didn't don't want to think about it. I don't know. But when we are talking about a percent change in this unit, what formula should be like your reference? Table seven, can you tell me? Okay, good. And really, I just want to make sure you guys know, like, in all the situations, for the most part, it's been increasing, like interest would increase the amount, but um, there can be times where it decreases. That's why I usually will put a plus or minus so that you remember that if it's decreasing, that you subtract that rate. Um, and we made expressions for this yesterday. Yesterday, we identified the initial amount as a thousand. Our rate as a decimal was one percent as a decimal. And we added that to one. And M was like for months, or the time frame was for months, so we used the letter M. Now again, we condensed it even further. 1.01 to however many months there were. So if we're talking about in three years, how many months are in three years? 36. 36. There's 12 months in one year, right? And then times by three is 36. So Elena is right. Is Tyler also right? And see, I felt like maybe one person say that they're both right. So think about it. Would that give you the same answer? And do you know why it gives you the same answer? Okay, good. So that is called the power rule. When you have a power, like an exponent, raised to another power, another exponent, you can just multiply the exponents together. Yes. yes. So that's why over here, I mean, we have the same base still, raised to the power of 12 and then raised to the power of three. 12 times three is 36. These are equivalent. So, and also I read this wrong. It says, why do their expressions both represent it correctly? So really you all should have voted that they both represent it correctly. And so they do, and you could use some of this as your explanation. There are 36 months in three years, but they are both correct. All right, any questions on that? So we know they're both correct now officially. Kieran says that the account balance can be represented like this. 
Is he correct? And I think on my screen, it shows it as a comma. It should really be a decimal. And I think on your page, it's a decimal. But would Kieran also be correct? I'll give you, I don't know, 30 seconds. See what you can figure out. When in doubt, if you want to see if something's equivalent or not, if they are, they should give you the same answer in the calculator. So is Kieran also correct? What do we think? Raise your hand if you think it is also correct. Okay. Is there anything he's wrong? All right, so it will give us the same value in the calculator. Let's prove that to you, those of you that are undecided, you should, especially on your tests, be able to identify when it's all numbers, are they equivalent? So, you way to do that, you could test it out in your calculator. We already know that Elena and Tyler's are both equivalent, so I'll just take Elena's, because it's shorter. And when I put that in the calculator, I get this decimal. When I put Kieran's in the calculator, I also get, wait, is it like a little bit different? It is a little bit different. So, um, where the book said it was correct earlier. So let me go and see it. When we do like maybe look at Tyler's expression, when we do 1.01 .01 to the 12th power, and the reason I did 12 is because then they raised it to the third. So I'm assuming they maybe got this by doing it to the power of 12. But don't I get the same decimal that Kieran has? Does it say the same thing that's on our paper that Kieran has? Granted, this is longer, but the calculator rounds at some point. So it is still equivalent. So when you see a problem similar to that on your test, you can use your calculator to confirm yes or no, it's equivalent or not. And really these two decimals that I was trying to show you earlier are very close to each other. They're off by like 0 0.09. So you could still say pretty confidently that they are still equivalent. It's just the rounding that throws it off. So for the explanation, you could say, yes, you agree. 1.01 .01 to the 12th power, when we work that out, is about 1.1268. When we do our order of operations, and we take Tyler's, because his has it as like an innermost problem to work out first, that still gives me the same answer as this, and then when I raise it to the third, gives me the same account back. So this directly relates to something you'll see on your test. That's why, you know, we're still trudging along, even though a lot of it is pretty repetitive. You gotta be able to tell that they're representing the exponent differently, but see whether or not it's still equivalent. Okay, any questions on the one? All right, um, just a few general announcements before we continue on with the lesson. We are very close to the end of the unit. I think after today's lesson, we might just have one more. And 
today specifically we're looking at for different intervals of time. So I'm recording, I'll link it in the slides like always. There's two separate puzzle pieces, but combined it's like nine questions. So I've shortened them both, only pick the parts that I think would be really relevant to the test. So please do them both still. And this will probably be moved up a day. I will send an email out to you and all your parents notifying them of that and that the study guides are in Schoology and you can start getting help as soon as tomorrow even. Tomorrow there's Saturday Academy from eight to 10. You do not have to have enough to go. Like you can go even if you have an eight. You just wanna make sure that you're really ready for the unit test that's coming up. Um, so I did just finish the review and I just have to publish it. I'll just go ahead and publish it right now. But those that aren't familiar with how the reviews work, they are very closely aligned to the actual test. So literally all we changed was maybe the numbers, the tables, the graphs, everything else is the same. This matches your 100 point portion of your test. So I make it worth 100 class points. For reference, like your normal classwork is like 10 points each. So this is worth like 10 of those. Um, then this other one, the other review that's on paper, which you can grab today, but I plan to give it out Monday, but it's also linked in that assignment link too. That matches your 50 point portion of your test. So I make that one worth 50 class points. And I usually check it when I check the binders, which I'll check on Tuesday. So yeah. Do them, ask questions on them. You'll have time probably Tuesday to just work on them and ask questions before you test on Wednesday. So if you are prioritizing what you need to get done and you have like a bunch of missing work for this class, these would absolutely be on the top of that list. Because combined, that's equal to 15 homework assignments. So probably better off getting that done. I want you to do it. That's why I make it worth the most amount of points. Thank you. And then another big chunk of your grade would be your binder check. So that goes in the project grade. That'll be the only thing in that category for a while. So definitely make sure your notes are up to date. I have a lot of kids out and some for like a week or so at a time. So hopefully they're keeping up, but that's the expectation of that. You are keeping up. At least get caught up in something. We're going to skip ahead to the warm up that's on the back side, just because the one on the front side is just a bit too much of the same. We want some different stuff going on. So look at the lesson 18, which is on the back side. We're going to decide if each expression is equivalent to 1.21 to the 100th power. So these, this is a math talk. You try to do this without a calculator and without scratch work. So when you think you know the answer, you just put your thumb up. Keyword is try to do it without a calculator um, or scratch work. I would never tell you to do that any other time. Yes. So here's the first one. 1.21 raised to the 10th and raised to the 10th again. Put your thumb up when you think you know if it's equivalent to the first expression. Once I see enough thumbs, then we can move on and then hopefully have time to work on your practice later. I just feel like a lot of you aren't engaged. So are we looking at it? Are we thinking about it? Some of what you think you know, yes or no.
Okay, Brooklyn, what do you think? And why do you think it's equivalent? Because when I do 10 times 10, that is 100. So that's using our power rule. So I really expected way more people to know the answer to this one. Yeah, let's talk about it. But anytime you have a power raised to another power, you can just multiply the exponent. So 10 raised to the 10, 10 times 10 is 100, that matches. So yes, that one is equivalent. Put your thumb up when you think you know this one's equivalent. 1.21 raised to the 50 raised to the 50 again. Ryder, what do you think? No. And why not? There's 50 times 50, not 100. So again, 55 times 50 which would follow the power rule. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I want to guess that it's 2,500, but we just figured out like 10 times 10 is 100. 50 times 50 is like way bigger than that, right? So there's definitely went with a no on that one. Next one. Is that one equivalent to the original? For this one, I'd say it's probably okay to use a calculator. I don't know how to do it. Is it equivalent to the original? Uh, okay. Okay, it would. However, does this one have the same base as that one? So in our power rule, the base would have to also be this, like, like it doesn't just change. So it wouldn't go from 1.1 to now 1.21. Uh, so that's why I said maybe use a calculator. I don't know how else you know how to tell if it's equivalent otherwise. Um, someone who did use a calculator, what did you say? Brooklyn? He said, yes, it's equivalent because so if you, and it's all numbers, if they are equivalent expressions, then they should give you the same answer. So if I test out my original and compare it to my one in question, I have it look something like this, which is the exact same decimal for these two. So yes, they are equivalent. And the reason why could be lots of things, but how do you think they came up with, I don't know, I'm not gonna ask that, never mind. But to tell that they're equivalent, you can just put them in the calculator and if they are, they should give you the same answer. So when you see something similar to that on your test, maybe you set it up a different way, but your test is showing it another way, that doesn't mean that you're automatically wrong. They just might express it in a different way. So last one for this. Is this one equivalent? The last one, if it's equivalent, or you know whether or not it's equivalent, go ahead and put your thumb up. This one, I don't think you should need a calculator for. Okay, why do you think no?
Okay. So John's checking it. Someone else that has their thumb up, what do we think? Yes. Okay, and why yes? It's the same thing as the other two. It equals the same thing if you put it in your calculator, but also we just verified that the third one was correct. And the fourth one is just after applying the power rule. Remember we wrote this for the third one? Exact same thing. All right, but good. So when you see powers raised to another power, you could apply the power rule and still see if it's a third one. Any questions on that? All right, our last activity before I let you just work on the practice. Um, the one that's underneath this one is really good practice for the test of time. It covers almost all parts. So from 1790 to 1860, the United States population in thousands is modeled by this equation, where T is the number of years since 1790. You're going to answer all of these different questions related to the real life situation given the equation. So I feel like for at least the past week, we've mostly been making the equation. Now, when you're given it, you need to be able to dissect these parts. Do that within your groups, all the parts A through H. If you get stuck, let me know. But when we go over the answers, it's going to be like lightning round. Can't wait like five minutes for each table to think about it when they're called up. So I'll give you some time. Once this is reviewed, we can start the practice. But otherwise, we can do the first. Table five. About how many people were living in the U.S. in 1790? And where do we look for that information? Okay, that is our y-intercept. Did you have to graph it to see that? Or you could tell because since this matches our exponential function setup, the number that is not attached to the exponent is always your initial amount. And it said earlier that T is years since 1970, or sorry, 1790, and then that would be an input of zero if you did calculate it, and it still gives you that it's 4,000. Good, so table six. What about in 1860? You can either give me the value or tell me what I need to do to figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it 33,000. Okay, how did you do it? Um, well, I took the equation and then that's how I can use it to do what I can craft it. When you say you put it in Desmos, did you graph it or did you just um, plug in a number for the exponent? I plug in a number for the exponent. Yeah, I know. So, what number should the T be? Table seven, can you tell me what the T should be? 70. Because how many years after 19, or I keep saying 19, how many years after 1790 is 1860? 70. So there's that. And whatever decimal it gave you, can we have a decimal of a person? No. So that's why we are using that value. I don't know if that's the actual value. I'll check right now. But you don't really want to have to round. Um, and if it does tell you to round to a decimal, then just pay attention to what spot. Oh, 4,000. Okay. And 
this does follow traditional rounding rules, but just a rule of thumb, even if it didn't, like even if it said we should round up one, technically the data doesn't support that it's a whole nother person at that time. So even if it was like 0. 0.9, technically you would still round to this number. But again, it, it'll tell you on your test how it wants it, so just follow the instructions on your test. Table eight, what's the approximate annual percent increase predicted by the model? Okay, so the way that it's phrased, is it that my percent increase is 1.031%? So here's a common mistake, and it will try to trick you like that on your test. This part of it is where we need to look. But remember that when we were setting up the equation, that we always had to convert the percent to a decimal and then add it to one or subtract it from one, depending on what's going on. If I want the percentage from the equation, I kind of have to do the steps in reverse. I have to do one minus the number I have to get what decimal was plugged in for the R. And then I need to convert that to a percent. Okay, so then this, how do I convert it to a percent? If before we were taking the percents, dividing them by 100, the opposite would have to be multiplying it by 100% or just 100. I do 100% so that I know it's becoming a percent. And when I do that, it becomes 3.1% per year is what it thinks it's increasing by. Does that make sense? Don't try to trick you like that on your test. Don't let it trick you. Table nine, what does the model predict for the population in 2017? Uh, 4,090,000. Okay, one more time. 4,090,000. So like that now. Okay, I need to go read it from the paper because I can't translate it. Okay. Okay. So let's see if that's accurate. I already have it in my calculator. So all I need to do is change the exponents. Um what would my exponent be for that time frame? So that is the correct value. Let me just confirm that 2017 minus 1790 is 227 and it is. Now, is it accurate? I don't know, do you think that there's only um, 4 million people living in the United States. What do you guys think? Yeah. How many do you think there are? At least a billion. I don't know what the exact number is. I don't ever think about it, but I would say that it's like at least in the hundred millions, but it is probably at least a couple billion. So how many people live in the United States, about 331 ish, 332 million. So that's way bigger than 4 million, right? So models are just models. They're not necessarily like 100% fact. That's just what they were predicting at that time, that it was growing at that rate for a few years. So they wanted to see if it continues at that rate, 
how much would I have in 2017? Obviously, a lot of things have changed since 1790. Like healthcare got better. Um, people were living longer. So yeah, you could have lots of reasons for why it's not accurate, but that's just what the model says. So good. Then it says, what percent increase does the model predict each decade? I'm less worried about that. If you got it right, I'll tell you if you got it right. But I know it won't ask you to do that on your test, so I don't want to have to walk anyone through the struggle of figuring that out. So that's part D. If you want to know if you are right, they said 4,000 times 1.36 to the D power. So that would be, I'd say, 36%. In case you were curious. So what they did is they took the growth factor, how many years are in a decade? 10. So they raise it to the power of 10, um, which then when you multiply that out is about 1.36 in your calculator. This part of it helps you figure out your percentage. So that is equivalent to 36% when you take it away from the one. But be able to, when you have options, pick the correct option for which one makes the most sense. Good on that one? Okay. So then, less concerned about that one, less concerned about that one. Yeah, I think we're good. If you try the other ones and want to see if you're right, I can show you the key, but I think we can end it there. Any questions on anything before I give you time to work on your practices? John? Yes, that's fine, Bron. Um, yes, you can go to that. Yes. Yeah. For, for what reason? Will you get your work done? Will the people around you get their work done? Yeah. 